see our one of them in the name of Jesus. Today we'll go on part four. How to love each other. 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 Part four. Let me begin by saying this. In the kingdom of God, love is not a feeling. Love is not what? A feeling. <laughs> Say love, love is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. <laughs> it's not a feeling. Hmm? You don't need to feel love to love somebody. In the kingdom. In the world, they say, I don't feel love anymore. It's because they, they know, they see love as a feeling. Hallelujah. Mm. Love is not a wish, neither. It is not what you do when you feel like doing it. <laughs> or when it fits you. Love is not what you feel like you want to do in the kingdom of God. Or when it fits you. I get that. That's okay. Or it fits you. It's not something that must fit you at all. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, listen carefully. It is not what you do when you feel like doing it. Or when it fits you. Loving each other is a commitment. That the Lord has commanded us. Hallelujah. We are commanded. It's a commitment. It's a command that we are commanded to love each other. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Again, I'm commanded to love each other. It's a command. Hallelujah. It's a command. It's an order from the head of the church that we are to love each other. Hallelujah. Even as he loves us, so you don't have to love your neighbor the other way. The way he loves you. Amen. <laughs> That's the way you're supposed to love your neighbor. Hallelujah. Look at John 13, 34 and 35. John 13, 34, 35. John 13, 34, 35. The Bible says this. John 13, 34, 35. The Bible says this. John 13, verse 34 and 35. It says this. A new commandment. It's like a new commandment. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. Hallelujah. As I have loved you, Amen. that you also love one another. Hallelujah. Amen. How am I supposed to love my neighbor? Even as Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he said, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Hallelujah. Amen. They shall know that you are the disciples of the Lord when they see the love coming out of your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This means you have to choose to love your brethren. When you don't feel like loving them, you have to choose to love your brethren when you don't feel like Loving them. Hallelujah. Simply because the Lord commanded you to love. Hey, that's part of my You've got to believe that you are healed when you don't feel healed. Simply because he told you by the stripes you are healed. Hallelujah. The same way you've got to love when you don't feel like loving. It works the same way. You've got, you've got to believe you are forgiven even when you don't feel forgiven. Hallelujah. So can you see it's a choice to respond to what God has said. Hallelujah. I see you respond in the name of Jesus. I see you respond in the name of Jesus. Amen. To love each other the way he loves us. That's what he demands of us. He loves us so much that he was willing to take our place and give us his place. That's how you're supposed to start loving your neighbor. That means you must learn to start taking the place of your neighbor. 
He took your place. He became sin that you may become righteous. Hallelujah. That means he took your place of sin. He became sin. He took it. We can never take sins of each other, but we can take burdens of each other. Hallelujah. Because the only one who qualified to take our sins is our Lord Jesus. There is no other man that qualifies to take the sins of the world apart from the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But we all qualify to take one another's burdens. Hallelujah. So again, I'll take burdens in the name of Jesus. We qualify. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. The same love of God that Jesus had that made him to carry your position and your place. You have it inside of you. Hallelujah. And that's why you can respond in love anyhow in the name of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 21. 2 Corinthians 5 21. The Bible says this. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 21. 2 Corinthians 5 21. The Bible says this. For he has God has made Jesus to be seen for us. Can you see that? Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ? So can you see? He, he never knew sin, but God made him sin for you. Hallelujah. So can you see the place he took? He took your sin and he gave you his righteousness. Hallelujah. That means we are also called to take the burdens of our friends. To take the burdens of our brothers. Hallelujah. And we stand in their shoes in the name of Jesus. That's my prayer for you. May God use you to make someone smile in the name of Jesus. Love is willing to wait to allow another to have. <laughs> Love is willing to wait to allow another to have. When you've got one scorn and you're very hungry, then you give to somebody that shows that you're walking in love. You choose to wait for someone to have the scorn. Even when your stomach is crying, hallelujah. That is what is called love. Hmm? And when someone says, no, please, no, no, please take it. And you, are, and you are not doing it in sadness. You are doing it in the joy, hallelujah. Because some people that say, no, yeah, I know I'm angry, but I just love. Uh -uh, no, you've got to do it in the joy, hallelujah. Love rejoices to see another habit. May you rejoice in the name of Jesus. That's why when somebody buy a car, rejoice with them. Hallelujah. Go and rejoice. Go and party with them. I said, hey. God wants to love people through your hands. And God wants to love people through you. Hallelujah. There are some people that will never know God. The only God they will know is through you. Some people, they will never know Jesus. The only chance they are going to encounter is through you. Hallelujah. And that has to be seen and evidence through loving them. I said through loving them. In the name of Jesus. Your neighbors, they are waiting to see the love of God come out of you. For them to follow you to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you see your neighbor, they are hungry. And you've got food. You are just watching at them. The love of God doesn't abide in you. But in the name of Jesus, we are going to give. Hallelujah. We are going to reach out, hallelujah, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. It could be God can just, you know, speak to you. Pay someone taxi today. Pay someone taxi. You're just saying to someone, say, no, please don't come and pay your taxi today. That's the love of God, hallelujah. Amen. You must start someone to demonstrate this love. Amen. Someone say, when I have a Lord, I'll demonstrate. No, you have to be God from where you are. From 10 rand, you must show love, hallelujah. Amen. From 20 rand, you must show love. Then from 100 million, you're going to show love, hallelujah. But that's not for what? Dead right. Are you going to show some love? Look at this. I wrote this. The world is hating. H U R T I N G. The world is hating a lot. That's why they are looking for who can touch them with the love of God. Because love is the healer. The world is hating, I'm telling you. Politicians are hating. Leaders are hating. People are hating all over the world. 
But the love of God can heal hearts. The love of God can heal souls in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that God will use you to give someone that will receive the love of God in the name of Jesus. When you are at the airport, God will deal with you. Remove your earrings and give someone that encounter. And as you do it, just the tears flowing out. Why? Because you touch them with the love of God. May you touch people in the name of Jesus. I said, may you touch people in the name of Jesus. So many people, they will never see Christ apart from you. By your love. Hmm? Your family, they want to see Christ next to you. May they see him in the name of Jesus. Many people, Jesus Christ is not Lord, but only Savior. When he is Lord, it means you're going to do his love. Many people, all they say, Jesus is my Savior. But many people, Jesus is not Lord. Lord means whatever he tells me, I do. Lord means he controls your life. <laughs> That's the meaning of Lord. But many people, Jesus is just Savior. They're just going to heaven. But Jesus controlling their lives, controlling what they do, is no longer so with many people. Because he's no longer saved, he's no longer Lord. Lord means control over my life. Hallelujah. Control over my family. Control over my resources. Control over whatever I do. If Jesus is not controlling your life, he's not yet Lord. Amen. If he's Lord, you'll be in the service. Hallelujah. If it's Lord, you are going to give and die. Hallelujah. If it's Lord, you are going to reach out to others. Hallelujah. If it's Lord, you are going to love others. He said, love your neighbor as I love you. That means he has told me that I have to do it. As I have to do it. In the name of Jesus. Many people, that's what they have been developed inside. Many people are babies inside. Do you know this love walk? It will mature your insights. Yeah. It will develop you. You are going to become so old on the inside and so strong on the inside. So when I mean old, that means strong and powerful, not just aging. Many people are so babyish. Hmm? They are babyish. Look at babies, all they do. When you touch their are they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are scorn, they cry, no, it's mine, it's mine. Babies are selfish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm? Babies are what? Selfish. Because everything they see is theirs. Mm -hmm. They can never share. Hallelujah. But when you mature in the Lord, sharing becomes your language. Sharing becomes your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I prophesy that you're going to share in the name of Jesus. I said, I want to share in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, many believers are nepios. N-E-P-I-O-S. Nepios. Nepios means childish or infant. In other words, for being an infant, a child. But I like this word, childish. <laughs> eh? That's why I remember I've told you this year that there are people that are 70 years in their body. But they are one month old in their heart. If you see the things they do, you run away. Because they are too childish. They complain a lot. They mama a lot. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, those are child. They don't, those are children. But when you mature, you begin to praise God a lot. Hallelujah. When you mature, you begin to thank God a lot. Hallelujah. When you mature, you don't see problem anymore. Hallelujah. Maturity gives you stamina to respond right. Many believers are nepios. Hmm? Every small problem, yeah. they cry. <laughs> they did this to me. They did this to me. You are still a child. And you are going to know somebody is a child when they function by, I feel. Every time you hear in the mouth of someone, I feel, I just feel, I feel, I just feel, you are dealing with the child. Mature people are not feeling rude. They don't say I feel. They say I do. Hallelujah. Amen. Those are mature people. Amen. I just feel that they're not treating me right. Then you treat them right. That's a mature person. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Are we being blessed? Amen. So can you see Jesus already told us that we need to love our neighbor or our brothers, we love ourselves. This will begin to develop you inside. This will begin to strengthen you. This will begin to make you become a mature believer in the Lord. And if you want to grow quicker in the Lord, embrace love walk. If you want to grow faster, just grow in the love. Just walk in the love. Hallelujah. That's why. Show me a person that grows spiritual. I'll show you a person that grows in love. There's nothing like I'm spiritual and you don't walk in love. That's why remember I've told you that. Prayer can never make you become a tool alone. It's this fruit called love. When you begin to walk in this love, you develop. It's not that people just talk I'm spiritual. Uh -uh. When you are spiritual, there's something about you with love. People can see love. In the morning, they can see love. In the afternoon, they can see love. In the evening, they can see love. Hallelujah. That's why I pray for you. You are going to manifest the love of God in the name of Jesus. I say, I'm going to manifest the love of God in the name of Jesus. That's a proof you are going spiritual. And the same with all other gifts. A person that is growing in God, they grow in love, they grow in peace, they grow in joy, they grow in patience. They grow in faith, they grow in temperance. If you are short tempered, you are still a child. Amen. But begin to grow. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, begin to grow. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, begin to grow. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Remember, I've told you that being hungry is okay. Yeah. But don't be short tempered. <laughs> that even a cable, just a cable that you didn't put well, you go off. There are people can go off over tea just because the tea was made, made more sweeter. You see they are off already, power, they lose it. It's a sign those are napios, their children. I say, ah. So if Jesus is Lord, you're going to do the love. You're going to walk in the command. Hallelujah. <laughs> and listen, the proof that Jesus is Lord over your life is walking in the commandment. Hallelujah. The proof that Jesus is Lord over your life is doing the commandment and walking the commandment. And I'm going to show you tonight what are the commandments of the Lord. Of which we are touching one tonight, love is God's commandment. Of the New Testament people, hallelujah. Including the old, he told them, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But now he has told us, love your neighbor as I love you, hallelujah. He has amplified it. Look at John chapter 14, 15, comma 21. John 14, verse 15, comma 21. You are going to see something very powerful right there. Jesus said, John 14, 15, then comma verse 21. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And this is that word plural. Keep my commandments. Hmm? So my question is this. Is Jesus telling us again to keep those ten? No. Because he says plural. Now, I want to listen carefully. He says, if you love me, you're going to keep or do my commandments. This is a commandment. My commandments. <laughs> who is the person that loves God? The one who does what? The commandments of the Lord. Now, look at verses 21. I go to analyze that one. 21 says this. He that has my commandments and keep them, he it is that loves me. Wow. So who loves the Lord? The one who receives and does the commandments of the Lord. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. That means he shall experience the Father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Hallelujah. So can you say, he says, if you are going to keep the commandments, he's going to love you. 
The father will love you, and the son will love you, and they will start manifesting themselves through you. Hallelujah. You start seeing things that others can't see. You start hearing things that others are not hearing when you begin to do and to keep the commandments of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, what are these commandments? Then we go deeper. There are only two commandments in the New Testament. How many commandments? Two. So that's, these are the ones he's talking about here. If you keep my commandments, So, all the Ten Commandments, they have been summarized in these two. Hmm? So, there are only two commandments. And if you walk in these two, you are going to see the power of God. If you walk in these two, you are going to see miracles. Hallelujah. If you walk in these two, you are going to see God speaks to you. You are going to see God show you things. If you keep these two commandments, how many commandments? Two. So in the new covenant, the commandments are reduced to two. Right then, number one, love. That's what I'm talking about. Then number two, faith. These are the summary of the commandments. I'll give you the best. How many commandments are there? Two. Love and what? Faith. Have you seen these things? This is how Jesus has come. Because no love, no faith. Also no faith, no love. They work together. Where you are going to see faith working, there is love at work. Where you are going to see love working, there is faith at work. Hallelujah. You can never walk in love if you don't have faith. Also, you can never walk in faith if you don't have love. Hallelujah. They go together because we love by faith. I want you loving you, but by faith I must love you. Hallelujah. So can you see, love and faith are connected. Because how can I walk in love when I don't feel love? It's by faith. Hallelujah. How can I forgive someone when I don't feel, for, I don't feel like forgiving them? It's by faith. So two things that must keep you busy on a daily basis. Walk in love and walk in faith. So on a daily basis, you and me, we are in a 24-7 job. Are you walking in love? Are you walking in faith? If both of them are functional in your life, your life will change. That's your life will change. In the name of Jesus. When faith and love takes over your heart, things will change. That's why if you give your offering, it must be in love and in faith, then God will receive it. If you do your prayer, it must be in love and in faith. Then God will manifest. Hallelujah. Everything we do, everything you do must be in love and in what? Faith. All the time. So love and faith. Of course, love is in two measures. That's what I want to go deeper. Love is in two measures. Love for God, which is evidenced in love for each other. Love for God which is evidenced in love for each other. So show me a man who loves God. I'll show you a man who loves what? People. Show me a woman who loves God. I'll show you a woman who loves what? People. So you can never say, I love God and you hate your brother. Hallelujah. So can you see, loving God is going to be seen in loving each other. Amen. How can I know a church that love God? They love each other. I said they love each other. Amen. That's how you know a change that, that, that loves God. They love each other. Amen. The same way also you are going to love to see people also come to this church. Amen. Those that are bound. Those that are sick. You want also to see them healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if you love God, you can't keep quiet about God. You're going to share to your neighbors. You're going to share to your family. You're going to share to your friends because you want also them to experience the same power. Hallelujah. How many commandments are there? Two. What are these? Love and what? Faith. Can there be healing without faith? No. Can there be healing without love? No. So where this, where these two things are function, the power of God is there. Hmm? Because God is love and God is the God of faith. Wow. This is powerful. 
First John chapter 3 confirms this. First John 3, verses 20 to 24. Look at the confirmation there. First John 3. First John 3, verses 20 to 24. Look at what John by the Holy Ghost revealed this. So in the in the, in the new covenant, there are only two commandments. All the ten are summarized in these two: love and faith. <laughs> so that means tomorrow we are going to walk in faith and in love. Amen. The next day we are going to walk in faith and in what? In love. So everything you do, when you are sweeping, you should sweep in love and in faith. When you are decorating, you should decorate in love and in faith. Can you see this? Everything, when, you, whatever, when I'm preaching, I must preach in love and in faith. All the time, then God will manifest. If I preach a teaching and you go home condemned, it was not in love, it was not in faith. Whether I'm preaching on sin, you don't condemn you, but it will encourage you and give you the way out. Hallelujah! All the time when God is preaching, it will be faith and not love. Are you being blessed? How many have heard people say before to say, today the Holy, the Holy Spirit condemned me a lot? That's the problem. The Holy Spirit doesn't condemn. The Holy Spirit convinces. May He convince you to love. I say, may He convince you to love. In the name of Jesus. Look at 1 John 3, 20 to 24. He says this. For if our heart condemns us, what condemns us? Our heart, not God. When the word of God is coming in love and in faith, your heart will see the truth. And when your heart sees the truth, it will condemn you. You say you are wrong. Not God. Are you seeing these things? If our heart condemn us, but don't abide there. He says God is greater than our hearts. That means don't run away. If your heart condemn you, don't run away. Just tell God, hey, this is what I did. Forgive me. Because God knows that God is greater than our hearts and he knows of things. So God knows that you did it. So your heart is condemning you. All you need to do is repent and receive your forgiveness. Hallelujah. And God knew it already before you need to repent. So don't run out from God. Hmm? No matter what you've done, don't run out from God. You might come closer. I said, no matter what you've done, don't run out from God. Come closer. Because it's your heart condemning you. Because you see the truth. Now therefore repent and then draw closer and you are cleansed and forgiven. Hallelujah. He says, God, that's what the devil wants you to be in sin because he wants your heart condemned. A condemned heart can never believe God. Hallelujah. That's why every time when God wants to touch you, he's going to first deal with your condemnation. Because condemnation can kill your faith. There's nothing more deadly than condemnation. It will kill your faith. You have no confidence to believe God at all. That's why Jesus, when he found that man who was paralyzed, when they brought him down, the first thing he attacked was condemnation. He says, son, your sins be forgiven you. Why? Because the devil told him, you are so wicked, you can't be healed here, and you've done so much wrong. Look at these people in this building, they know you already. So all kinds of things sometimes spoke to his mind. And Jesus addressed condemnation. He says, your sins be forgiven. Why? Because that was the ignorance of the healing of the man. Hallelujah. Condemnation will hinder God in your life. So he says, if you have to condemn you, God knows about it. Just repent and receive forgiveness and go close. Verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, can you see that? Then have we confidence toward God. Ay, 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 ay. That's why God wants you to walk in the word so that you can walk in the confidence. Hallelujah. A, 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 a confident heart. A confident heart to always receive the blessing of the Lord. A confident heart to always see the power of God. Hallelujah. If our heart condemn us not, look at this. Then have we confidence toward God. 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him. Why? Because we keep his commandments eh, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Why did we receive? We kept the commandments of love and what? Faith. Then 23, he tells us the commandment. Look at this, 23. 
And this is and this is his commandment. What are these? Number one, that we should believe on the name of the Son Jesus. Number one, that's faith. And love one another as he gave us what? Commandment. So can you see that? So two commandments. If you keep these two things, you have to be confident. That means no problem with your neighbor. You are just in love with your family, your neighbor, and you are in faith. You always receive from God. Amen. Because there's nothing that is hidden in you. There's nothing that is bothering you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why if anything bothers you, you need to separate it quickly. Because it will hinder your functionality. Amen. Nothing will hinder in the name of Jesus. Amen. If your heart is telling you, call your neighbor and, for, and ask her to forgive you, do it quickly. Because if you don't do that, your heart will be condemning you and you'll be, in, you'll be unstable. Amen. You can't lay hold of the blessing of the Lord. Amen. But in the name of Jesus, whatever condemnation you have today, I flash it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. I flash it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Even the devil will condemn you for not being healed. He will say, look at you. You confess nothing as I'm saying, shut up. You was the devil want to condemn. <laughs> Did you know that God is not pleased when you are healed? Because that's not how it is. Oh, yes. God is not pleased when you are healed. The Bible did not say, when you are healed, God is pleased. The Bible says, without faith. So the issue is not that there is the healing in your body, or we know, but the faith part is what pleases God, not the healing in the body. That's a, that's a certain has convinced men to say, if, if it's not yet there, you are condemned, you don't have it. Can you see that? He didn't say, if you feel it, God will be pleased. He says, without faith, not without feeling it. Without faith. So you can be feeling sick, but what is in faith? That pleases God. Hallelujah. That's what pleases God before you feel it. But Satan will condemn you. You are still have symptoms, you see. You are not healed. Even say without feeling healed, you can't please God. Can you see how sad or Satan is? You convince you and condemn you. That look at you, you must be healed by now. I don't talk by sight. God didn't tell me that it's when, when I feel it, then it's pleased. He told me without faith. He didn't say without being, feeling healed. He says without faith. As long as I'm in faith, God is pleased. So God is pleased while his feelings are torturing your body. God is pleased because you are in the faith. Hallelujah. Can you see this is powerful? God is pleased. When man has not yet come, but you believe that you are, you are the man, hallelujah, then God is pleased. That's what makes God now manifest. But many people say, Satan has condemned them. Hmm? Hello? So, you know, some things, you know, because some people now question God, why? When? What's going to happen now? It will just end up from receiving from God. Amen. That's why any condemnation in your heart, in your mind, I flash it out in Jesus' name. Amen. As I flash it out in Jesus' name, Amen. you don't need to allow condemnation. It will block the love walk. It will block the faith walk. Amen. That's why if you talk to somebody bad and it bothers you, we can talk to them back and say so. So that you fix your heart. Your heart must never be in the place of condemnation. Because you can't receive from God. Hallelujah. Yes. That's why Paul made a statement. He says, For this cause, I always keep my conscience void of offense or condemnation toward people and toward God. That's why Paul moved in love and in, in faith and he saw the power of God. Hallelujah. That's what you must protect your heart from condemnation. Are we being blessed? Amen. Are we being blessed? Amen. Now, let me begin to close with this. This is so profound. How can I show love to each other? How can I show what? Love to each other. You see? It's so profound. Condemnation is a confidence killer. Condemnation is a confidence killer. 
Do you know there are some people, Jesus, like that man who was uh, who was who was tamaro, who, 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 whose, whose mouth was closed up, he couldn't speak, he was dumb. Mm -hmm. Jesus took him out of the city. Do you know out of the city? Because he knew that those guys of the city were full of condemnation. He took him away from the city, ministered to him, and he told him, don't go back to the city. That's why there are certain friends you must leave them that are always condemning you. That's why you should never allow anyone to remind you of the past. Amen. The only past you must remember is the good past. Amen. I said the good past. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, the new creature, Amen. old things are passed away. And behold, new things as what? Come. So you are brand new in the name of Jesus. I say you're branding in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say you're branding in the name of Jesus. Amen. You should always protect your heart from condemnation. Amen. I say, Amen. And this is Satan's duty every day. Because he knows with condemnation that is in your heart, your love won't work. Your faith won't work. If our heart does not condemn us, then I will confidence toward God and receive whatever we ask of Him because we keep His commandment. Are you seeing that? How many? How many? Some people. Somebody will ask one one day question to say, "Is God unreasonable? Is God unreasonable?" How much can I do to please God? Huh? <laughs> How much can I do to please God? How can I know God is pleased in, in my prayer life? Because God knows you need to work. So how much prayer can I make to please God? No, He gave you your heart. You will have a confirmation in your heart. How much weight can you read in your day to know it's okay now? Your heart to be at peace. That today is enough. Hallelujah. That's how you know that God is pleased. It's when your heart is okay. But if you are reading, your heart is still telling you, no, keep going. It's God is telling you, it's not enough for the day. If you pray, your heart is not yet settled. Keep praying until you settle. Do you settle the peace that God says that it's okay for today? Because that be the, that be the case, then you have to spend with God the whole day with God, the whole day with God, the whole bath, the whole tip. No, God is reasonable. Hallelujah. Amen. So your heart will tell you. There are times when I'm reading the Bible, I'll just know this is okay. I'm now fine. I feel I'm now. But uh, there's just a hunger to go. They just it means God is telling me, keep going. I will know when that. Peace come. So it's okay. Then I've pleased God for the day. So how can I show love? I told you, what, 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 what did I say? Love prefer. That means you pick your neighbor and not you. Love prefer. Number two, he said what? Love does not harm or it does heal to each Which never? It's never. So you don't harm your neighbor. Hmm? Number three, we said what? Love what? Covers the multitude of what? Sins. Love is not an exposer. Hmm? That's why don't sit in the scornful. <laughs> Some chapter one. Uh, so don't sit among the scornful. Those who scorn, who speak against others, who plan evil against others. There are people who plan evil to suck others at what? They, they just seek a tail. They can plan to suck people at work. Amen. That's devilish. Hallelujah. Amen. When you mean see somebody, people sit down, they plan out to jail, they can destroy someone, and you are there, it means you are partaking in destruction. Amen. May you never partake in the name of Jesus. Amen. That means you've got to leave and tell you, no, not enough. Or leave the place. Hallelujah. Did you know that quietness means consent? 
if you are quiet in the midst of that, you are also protection. Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. Number four, let me close. I love to the teaching, it's very profound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number four. Love takes care. Huh? Love does what? Takes care of each other. Takes care. In brackets, you can say love nurses. Like a like a, a mother who gave birth. She's like a nurse. <laughs> and I'm telling you, women know how to touch babies. Men can just be babies in her. Women, they know who work to the finger to press on the baby, uh, the, uh, and they how to. Men will just speak, papa, 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 you just speak in her. Because a woman is a representation of how God manifests to us. Well, that's part of it. How you see mothers respond to their children is part of the representation of God, how He manifests toward us. Mothers and children, don't dare them. Then we can see mothers are more careful than fathers. Where do you mind? That's just the truth. Do you know mothers they carry it nine months? Mothers they, they, they give birth in pain. So mothers, they are so that's why if you if you beat the child, you're gonna feel the mother feels it inside. Because she remember the pain. That's how much we come so to God. Hallelujah. When God sees you suffer, you know, his power moves inside. Because God wants you to heal and prosper. Hallelujah. Because God is love. He doesn't want to see you suffer. Amen. Have you ever seen any parent that stand up and say, praise the Lord. I just came to testify. My son just held the exam. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, my daughter just held the exam. Praise the Lord. My daughter just just missing just missing the place where to stay. Praise the Lord. You look at what kind of mother are you? So if you are not like that, how can you think God is like that? In the name of Jesus, you will never lack. I say in the name of Jesus, you will never lack. I say again in the name of Jesus, you will never lack. Love takes care or nurses. Now, here that's what, that's what I'm going to say. Did you know that the more you grow in God, the softer you become in your heart? That's the difference in your head. Look at children, those who are just beginning to walk with God. Do you know that I've developed a lot? Long time ago, I begin to preach, people will even say, this crying tears. Condemning themselves. I'll see a child. We just started. We were like knife cutting. So people need to change their food. Because we are children. But when you mature in God, you become soft. You become what? Soft. That's why even just as parents, I'm going to just open up a bracket. Be soft to your children. Be what? Soft. Now, love is so strong that it doesn't need to do certain action to prove it can correct. For example, uh, you don't need to say, stop that! And this is my house! And I'm telling them! And, and you've got to! Uh, 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 that's not love. Love is gentle. I just need to listen. If your child can even say, Mama, uh, Mama, uh, Mama, I want to do that. No. In love. Mama. No. And you mean it. Um, you, you, you don't need to change your face for your child to know your, your, you mean it. Your child must just know by your way. Hallelujah. Amen. That daddy, when he's speaking, that is his way. Hallelujah. May you become like that in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say, become like that in the name of Jesus. Just be soft. You can say no in a soft tone. Are you going to do this? No, 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 I don't think so. No. How do you mean it? 
But if you have to express your feelings and your body to mean that you said no, you are still a pious. In the name of Jesus, may you mature. Hallelujah. I said, may you mature. Hallelujah. When you become mature in love, your no is no, your yes is yes. So be soft to your Jude, your, your daughter. Be soft to your children. There's one woman, she used to beat children singing and him. Her wonderful man. So when the child does wrong and doesn't listen, you take she'll take a stick. How is this discipline the child? So she'll be singing, not kissing. You are an angel. You are a stupid. Uh-uh. You don't need to kiss to discipline the child. She was missing singing as she was only singing, singing hymns. Those hymns as she's singing. And beat the child. She, she is hymns of God. She don't need to kiss the child to beat the child. That's love. Love is strong. I am strong. I am strong in the Lord. <laughs> That's good. Huh? You don't need to kiss the child when you're beating the child. You are an idiot. You are a dog. And you show a kind of parent that they do to children. I haven't heard that before. Parents don't they, they insult children. You are just a dog. You, you are destroying, you are killing your child. Hallelujah. You call that more man and say you are a man of God. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to you nice. You call that you are a woman of God. You are going to do great things for God. Amen. You can do better. Amen. In love. Because when you mature in love, you are soft. Say again, I'm soft. Soft. We are all learning to go to this level. And we are believing in God that you and me are going to ascend to this level. Hallelujah. We have become so soft. We are born and soft. Do you know that? The only people that you can rebuke publicly are hypocrites. Jesus rebuked Pharisees publicly. And even called them, you hypocrites, because Hypocrites must be rebuked publicly. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. Because they are evil. They have just decided to be evil. Amen. Those rebuke them publicly. Amen. But people that are do things out of ignorance and weakness, rebuke them privately. Hallelujah. Let's go to this verse. I think two more verses. First Thessalonians. Finish at five. Chapter 2, 7 and 8. First Thessalonians chapter 2, 5 and 8. Listen carefully to this. It's very powerful. First Thessalonians chapter 2, 7 and 8. Paul says this. And we were gentle. Did you hear that word? We were gentle among you. Wow. That's radical. We were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. And I like says, even as a caring mother cherishes a child. So Paul is telling them, I was gentle with you. You see, Pastor Stan is gentle. Because love is gentle. Love is what? Gentle. I said, eh. Amen. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls because you were dear to us. Paul says, we didn't just want to give you the word of God, we even gave ourselves to you because you were dear to us. Hallelujah. This is care. Your boss will see you with a caring heart. Your friend at work will see you with a caring heart. Hallelujah. Just a heart of care. Are we being blessed? Amen. Now, love cares. I may remember the, the, the story of a man that was injured by thieves. Jesus gave a parable. That's the one I read that close. This is very powerful because if you don't master this, this man. Luke chapter 10, 25. Luke 10, 25. Look at this. 
Look at this. Luke 10, verse 25. He says this. And beyond a certain lawyer stood up and tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit the, the kingdom of life? He said unto him, What is written in your law? How do you read it? 27. And the answer said, You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. It's what he Moses. 28. And he said unto him, You have answered right. This do, and you shall, you shall live. This what? Do. 29. But he will need to justify himself. Do you see that wait? He said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? This is wickedness. You've just quoted the scripture, I should love my neighbor. Now you're asking Christ, Who is my neighbor? Can you see? He's trying to justify himself. That means I cannot know my neighbor. Is that true? Can you see hypocrisy already? In justifying himself, he says, Who is my neighbor? Are, are you seeing these things? Jesus said, he answered, a certain man went out from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. So a pastor or a prophet is <laughs> coming that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. That means I'm late for church. I'm going to preach on love today. But you just left somebody there. Mm. I've got love sermon today. I can't attend to you. So can you see a pastor? Find a man about to die. He passed. Are you seeing this thing? Okay. And likewise, a Levite. This can be a deacon or an usher. Levite, this uh, helps ministry. So these are believers. When he was at a, at a place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Can you see that? All these are Jews. <laughs> and you must remember that the Jews and the Samaritan people were not in harmony. They are the landlords of racial discrimination. They are prejudices and they are racism, these guys. They are the huge problem. Now, Jesus is about to give a radical statement to us. But a certain Samaritan, wow. Now, imagine. Jesus said, not even the Jew, all the Jews never demonstrated love, but a Samaritan. Have you noticed that sometimes you can find love even among people not even of God? But believers, they can stripe each other, they can strip each other naked. Do you know why Muslims is taking over? Just that fake love nation of calling people, give them meat and all kind of things. That's the people just going there. A good Samaritan. Are you seeing this? As he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he laughed. And went to him and bound him up his wounds. First of all, this guy maybe is going for business appointment. He put that business appointment on hold. Hello? It is costing him already. The people are waiting for him. This is love. I said, This is love. Yeah. Pour oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him in an inn in an hospital and took care of him. I just told you love takes care. He took care of him. And on tomorrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And so ever you spend me more, when I come again, I will repay you. <laughs> Which now of these three think you was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he said that showed mercy on him, and Jesus said unto him, Go and do you also likewise. Yes. Love takes care. That's why we need to take care of ourselves. It's 
having some discussion. But I also was asking, how can we take care of the people? So it's good. When the Lord begins to bless you, you must begin to think how to take care. Care, love cares for each other. Are you going to care in the name of Jesus? Love cares. 